So hi everybody, this is Sasa Hub. I'm Jaco and today I'm again with Eric Gruvenhoff. He has done some uh, good research on urban growth today. So he, he has already published the article on Seeking Alpha. You can check that out over there as well. But before you get into the content, Eric, please introduce yourself and then we'll jump into the research. Sure. My name is Eric Gruvenhoff. I write for Seeking Alpha. I wrote this article a couple of weeks ago. And it shows a lot of similarities. The company's called Urban Grow, ticker is UGRO. And it shows a lot of similarities with a company called Innovative Industrial Properties, which is a fancy title. It's just a real estate investment trust for marijuana grow houses. So I will explain the significance of IIPR, Innovative Industrial Properties. And I will show the similarities of how this company is similar to it in a way. This is the company. The company is called Urban Grow. I met the CEO through Zoom and it was a very interesting business. So first let me talk about innovative industrial properties because this is sort of the foundation. So I actually bought this a couple of years ago at around 77 a share and I sold it at around 150. And this is what it's done, right? So. What is innovative industrial properties? Long story short, they, some real estate investment trusts will own residential real estate. Some will own shopping malls. This one only owns marijuana grow houses, right? So they don't touch the plant. They don't care who is involved, uh, which company they, they rent from, right? All they care about is collecting the rent with this type of specialized real estate. Right. So this particular company was a real foundation company that I really studied well and that I really wanted to learn from. And I'll explain why. Right. So, yeah, five, ba 10, bag 12 bagger in five years. I mean, studying this one and investing in this one and knowing to see it again. Right. Can really give you good returns. For example, Amazon. I always say that Amazon was started in the 1880s by Sears. Sears would send you a giant book of possible products and then they would ship it to you, which is exactly what Amazon does through the phone, right? So I try to look at history. So this company, what makes this company significant, right? Is they operate in the expense column of an industry. I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. So here is a rough example right, of being in the middle of an industry. You have the airline industry, you have the customers, you have the plane, and you have the airline, right? So this is the revenue for the company, right? This is the expenses of the company, and this is the profit of the company. So United Airlines here, they have to buy this plane, and then they have to collect revenue from this customer, and this is their profit, right? So this company here, Boeing, Boeing does not care if these companies are profitable, all they care about is selling their planes, right? So whether it's Spirit Airlines, whether it's American Airlines or whoever, Boeing just wants to collect their money, right? And this is exactly what Urban Grow does and how it's similar to innovative industrial properties. I'll explain it now. So revenue minus expenses equals profit, as everybody knows. So let's say this company, Canopy Growth, right? Well, they sell to the United States, Canada, and Europe, and they have expenses. Their expenses are innovative industrial properties or urban grow, or their expenses are another grow house and another company like urban grow. So innovative industrial properties doesn't care if these companies are ever profitable. It doesn't matter to them. All they care about is collecting their rent. I have a grow house. This is how much it costs. Go ahead and make your money. Don't make your money. Sell this type of pot. Sell that type of pot. I don't care. Just pay me my rent. Right. That is urban grows. I mean, that is innovative industrial properties business model, similar to Boeing. Right. Boeing doesn't care. Right. So it's in the expense column of the industry. Right. Now, urban grow is this similar. It's not the same as innovative industrial properties. It's not going to happen. It's, I'll, I'll explain what it is now and you can see how it's similar. So, urban grow. Right. They do cannabis as a service, which is, I should trademark that. I came up with that. So Urban Grow, they do the maintenance of the grow house, right? So they do 
humidity control. They do irrigation. They do architecture. They do sensors. Like they have, this company has sensors where if the humidity in your grow house gets too high, they have a sensor that goes to the computer that tells them to lower the humidity, right? So they are, they serve the marijuana companies. So they are not idealists. They are not um, people that are trying to change the cannabis world, right? They are just botanists and architects and engineers that are specializing in this area, right? So mm -hmm. any marijuana company, whether it's Urban Grow or not, right? They need somebody like this. They need somebody that knows how to cultivate these plants. So that is where they fit in in the industry, right? So I started off the article, which I put a bullish rating, not a, I put a buy, not a strong buy, because it's still not too obvious yet, but it's worth looking because of the similarities, right? Right now, Washington, D.C., you don't know what's going to happen with the marijuana socks. We don't know if it's going to be legal. I mean, just last week, we got new i got news on my phone like oh it's going to be legal and then the, the, these marijuana stocks are going up and the next day oh it may not be legal and you know the stocks went down again like all well, this stuff right so i compared it to innovative industrial properties they lease the grow house and insert themselves in the expense column of the cannabis and in cannabis industry right so they don't touch the plant they're in the real estate business they're not in the marijuana business right so Urban Grow is in the engineering business. They're actually not in the marijuana business, but they are kind of, right? So here are some of these stocks. Here's canopy growth, right? Canopy growth is in, according to my little thing here, right? It's in the profit column, right? So canopy growth has been bleeding cash every year, right? They're losing a ton of money. And look at this, right? Let's Nothing but losses. All right, let's just do a max. Look how high it's gotten at one point. 42 down to seven, All right? Tons of losses, All right? Still losing money. If I were to go into the financials, I'd show you that too. So here's another one, organogram, right? IPO'd at seven down to $1, right? Massive haircut and it's losing money, right? Because it's very, it's, it's in the profit column of the industry, not in the expense column. Now while these companies are losing money and while these companies are going off a cliff, this company is growing, right? Because it's in the real estate business, not in the marijuana business, right? So it's in the real estate business of the marijuana business, right? So the only, really the only company besides these two that I pretty much like is TrueLeave, right? So TrueLeave, they are making money. They're over the counter. Right. This is not on American exchange to MSO multi-state operator. Right. So really what they are, like canopy growth is a manufacturer. They grow the pot. Right. And truly sort of redistributes it. They're like a Walmart or a whatever store, right? There's they're a cannabis store. They sell their gummies and the pot and the vapes and all the stuff and the oils and all the stuff. Right. So it's very interesting in the United States right now. And I didn't know this until I spoke to these people. If I live in Florida and I grow a cannabis crop in Florida, I can't ship it to Georgia or another state. So imagine Coors Light having to have to be grown in each state before you ship it. Or imagine uh, Chianti wine, right? Can't be shipped to France. Or imagine Scotch can't be shipped from Scotland to Italy. Like it makes no sense that that's the current state of the marijuana industry. So these companies that are in the expense column, they're all vulnerable to all this, right? I don't want anything to do with government rules, which is why this is exactly why, you see, they don't have any rules. They just, all right, I have a house here. I have a building and I can lease it to you. That's it. And Urban Grow is just, all right, well, I can help you grow it in that building, right? So... TrueLeave is one of my more favorite though. TrueLeave is a pretty decent company, but because of that risk is why I stay away from it, right? Like if I were to show you TrueLeave, it's more button. If I were to show you TrueLeave, you would see a ton of growth, right? You would see good profitability. Now, if I were to even do this as a percentage of revenue, right? Look at their operating margin, operation as a percentage of revenue, right? Great numbers, 
over 20%, right? Or if I were to do year over year growth, right? So total sales is growing 100% this year, 79% this year, like great, right? So it's a decent company, that's my point. But this is why I love Urban Grow, which the numbers aren't there yet which is why I'm not totally, totally all in yet. Like it's not an obvious win, like digital turbine or inbound, but it's worth looking at, right? So I talked about institutional ownership a little bit. I talked about the example I just gave about a beer being grown, you know, manufactured in one state, can't go somewhere else. Here's a chart that I just looked at. And basically this company, they offer turnkey solutions for controlled environment cultivation facilities, which is a grow house. So... There's two ways to grow marijuana, right? There's indoor and outdoor. Outdoor is much cheaper because you don't need a giant building. It's just outdoor. But marijuana, as the, the enthusiasts will tell you, is much more sensitive. It's not like a tomato where you could just grow it outside and every tomato kind of tastes the same. Like it's very sensitive. Cannabis is sensitive, right? So if you want like the top-notch sensitive to get this top-notch cannabis to get this top-notch effect, it has to be grown at a certain way. So the main service that they offer is grow care, which is what they, they call it. If I were to open this tab here, I can actually exit this out. So this is their site, right? So this is what they do. This is like pictures worth a thousand words. This is what they do. This is their giant machine that controls a whole bunch, right? So they do irrigation, right? This is what's called vertical farming, right? They can work with food, but they don't. Right now it's like this is what they do, right? They also, they also train your employees. So if I have a grow house, if I have a marijuana business and my staff quits, they can train my new staff on how to use these machines, right? So architecture, engineering, cultivation support. So like they, you know, will water a plant a certain amount at this age of the plant, at this age of the planet, it'll be different humidity control. So that is what they do. They want to control all aspects of the growing. But Urban Grow, if they work for this company, right, if they're controlling the growing of the cannabis for company A or company B, and company A is profitable and company B is not profitable, it doesn't matter. They just want to collect for their service, right? So that's what puts them in the expense column. So in a company like that, as long as people are smoking pot, they will have a profitable business. Just like as long as people are flying planes, Boeing will sell planes. doesn't matter who buys them, American Spirit, whoever, right? And really, I didn't get into the growth of the cannabis industry too much. We already know everybody, not everybody, we already know a lot of people smoke. We already know that people would prefer legalization because then it's not in the black market it's in the open market so when things become in the open market in the black market you're trusting your dealer in the open market you're trusting yelp or other reviews right so like you're way more likely to get a high quality product you're way more less likely to get a product that's laced with drugs let's say right like other drugs that could happen in the black market so people i didn't really get into that too much because it's pretty obvious right Everybody smokes. So if there's a better product that's legal, obviously they would do that rather than that illegal, right? So the service gross margins are 40%. This is what they told me, right? So company, they architects, engineers, HVACs, plumbing, electric. So first note, they do not manufacture the pipes. They do not manufacture the sensors. They do not manufacture these things. So it's really just a quick markup, but they're real... That's, I really focus on the service aspect, this, right? So this is actually my favorite, pest control solution, right? So fungus, other bacteria happen when you're growing food or a plant, which is why I'm sure you know and have heard of pesticides and why people want organic food because it has no pesticides. So what they do actually is they just release bugs into the marijuana plants. So if there's a fungus, rather than spray a pesticide, they will just release a lot of bugs to go eat the fungus, and then they, the bugs leave. So in a way, it's, it's healthier, which I just thought that was, really what that showed was the attention to detail, right? That 
all right, well, if there's this amount of fungus per square foot, we can release this many bugs into your environment, which is like, I just think it's cool. Right? It just really shows the attention to detail. Or if there's other pests, right? They'll release the good bugs to go eat the bad bugs, right? Yeah. And this is the key. This is their real service, right? Diagnostics, right? They could monitor temperature, humidity, equipment malfunction. If the humidity generator is broken, they will get a, get a notification, right? So this is their some of their financials, right? This is their total revenue, right? And this is not percentage, this is just total, right? So they were making, you know, uh, looks like 22 million a couple of years ago in revenue and now they're at 50. So that is monstrous growth last year, right? This is their profitability, right? Growing loss. This is all everything below this line here is losses. This line should be colored. I don't know why it's not. So they just broke to profitability, right? And that is when I see a company that just became profitable. It's the highest risk, but that's the most rewards, right? If it if it has the ability to really just go like that, that is when you know it's not my biggest holding. I own a couple of shares, not that much, but it's worth looking at, right? Yeah. So I wrote about how far it can go. Well, it can go as far as the industry, right? If they serve a marijuana company well enough, the company will keep coming back. And if that particular company expands to a new house, they'll use the company they already use. Or if they pick up a new customer, a new company, they can grow that way as well, right? So I wrote briefly about outdoor cannabis, right? So outdoor, outdoor cannabis has gained popularity. And I believe in this link. Yeah, go away. So in 2016, it was 80% indoors grow houses, 30%, 7% outdoor grow houses, right? And greenhouses, which is a, a blend. It's basically a, a glass house. So look at the percentage, right? It used to be 80% indoor. Now it's 60% indoor in 2020. Whereas this was 37% now 42%, this was 34. So it's losing share, which is not necessarily bad, right? Really just a lot more outdoor farms are growing. So I just talked about that a little bit about how, you know, outdoor, it's a lot easier to grow outdoor, right? You don't need a giant building. You don't need crazy air conditioning or humidity costs, but there's a lot more volatility in the manufacturing. Take a look at wine, for example, right? Yeah, this year depends versus, on the season and right, the weather. Right. So you could harvest once or twice a year, right? And you might see people at a restaurant ask for, hey, I want the 2013, not the 2012, because that year it was different. So the, the taste and the quality of the wine was different. So with the indoor, you will have consistency, right? You will have way yeah. more. So, and it's year round harvest, right? You could harvest, you know, four times a year, five times a year rather than once, right? So I talked that, about that a little bit. And this is how one of the CEOs described it, right? We're growing the athletes that are going to the Olympics, right? In terms of the, indoor, like, so he compared regular marijuana to cannabis, I should say. Cannabis is a politically correct word, right? They, the indoor companies think of themselves as growing Olympic athletes as opposed to a regular person because that's how they see outdoor marijuana. It's just a regular guy, right? And we're growing the premium stuff. So... I talked about the expansion, how they are setting themselves up in Europe, right? So what's good about this, really, this is unique because it's really on the ground floor. Got it open twice here. Open that. So look at the small market cap. 125 million, right? So if this were to reach 2 billion cap, it would be a 20 bagger from this price, 18 bagger, whatever it is, right? So... It's very, very small in a young industry that's starting to get, you know, that's starting to grow. And if they were to become profitable over time and their customers were to be sticky, this could really be a huge, huge. And in a way, this is actually safe. Okay. And diverse, diversification, right? Diversification is thought of as safe, 
right? But if, if you diversify in the same thing, if all of the marijuana companies you buy are in this side of the column, right? In my opinion, it's not as safe as one or two companies on this side of the column, right? So in a way, urban growth, it's still very young and I wanna see a little bit more maturity, but okay. Take IIPR, for example. IIPR alone, one stock, is safer than 20 different stocks on this side of the column because of where it is, because of the volatility, because of the legalization, right? This is safer because it's just a grow house. So in a unique way, looking at this column can find you with one stock safer than 20, which is very, very unique, right? So urban grow isn't as safe as innovative industrial properties yet because I haven't seen it mature. I haven't seen its numbers. I haven't seen the, the retention numbers, but it has the potential because of where it is to be safer than all of these other companies, right? So as marijuana gets more legal, well, more grow houses are going to come, right? As mar more people smoke cannabis, well, more grow houses are going to be needed, right? Yeah. So I, you know, there's a lot of SAS, right? Software as a service. So I kind of saw it as a cannabis as a service, right? And I sort of finished up with uh, addictive, addictive things. And I sort of threw in here my, my old Celsius article, right? I bought Celsius at around eight and I sold it at around 60. I bought it at 9.22. So, so yeah. I sort of threw that in there. That's, but uh, that is how I see this business, right? So if okay. I were to put, what's up? So one question that I have is, don't you think if, if the, the companies that Urban Grow is um, providing services for are losing money, don't you think they could pass on those losses? In a way, right? So if I were to pull up, if I, in terms of forever, yes, right? So really what that does is it shelters you from the short-term volatility, right? So look at the losses for, this is for organic gram, right? 2015, loss, 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 right? So it protects you from any, you know, short to medium term losses. I mean, they can't do it forever, right? You can't lose money forever. Eventually you go out of business, yeah. obviously, right? But yeah, in, in general, it pre prevents you from, or let's, if I were to look at Canopy, right? Look at this. Since 2014, this company has been losing money, more money. How do you, how do you lose more money over time? How do you manage that? Right. This is a better example than an organogram, right? So they still have bills, right? This company, organogram, their electricity doesn't go down because they're losing money. Right. Their like water still costs the same. Right. The the water company like, is not going to say, okay, you're losing money, sure, I'll give you a break. Right. They're not going to do that. And organic um urban grow is they might give them like a small break or something like that but this is what they do it's just like innovative industrial properties right so it doesn't matter if i mean eventually they can't lose money forever right but yeah. while there's this risk of hey what's washington going to do are they going to legalize it they're not going to legalize it are they gonna you know is this going to happen is that going to happen well it doesn't really matter right so obviously maybe i misrepresented that margin of safety or the significance of it being in the expense column, but it just gives it less of a volatility yeah. factor. But yeah, it yeah. also has a less upside, right? Because those companies can obviously grow way higher, right? So if I were to go to their sales growth, right? And if I were to go to their, what they've done lately, right? So they were losing, five million a quarter as you can see these losses consistently going down and now they're hovering at the break-even point so they're not profitable yet which is why it's not a strong buy right net income is no. very similar right so if i were to look at their sales growth right 
look how much they're growing, right? 140%. So it looks like they're reinvesting all of their profits into growing the company, right? Yeah. So really it's, and I found it at first by this author here. These are two of my favorite authors, Donovan Jones and Shareholders Unite. This guy, Shareholders Unite, has made some profitable calls. So when I saw it, you know, they're not my determinant on whether I buy or not, but it gives me a starting point. So when I saw it, I got very interested and it doesn't do this. See this, this is crazy. How do you lose $800 million in a year? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but yeah, probably the point is that um, even though maybe the singular company is not going, doing that great in this moment probably um the the sector as a whole is growing as a result of more legalization and so on right so it's not my yeah. it, it's not my anywhere near my biggest holding at all but it's worth keep it on your radar you know yeah 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 so eric i think you explained uh this business and the business model where Urban Grow operates pretty well. So uh, thank you for your contribution, for your research that you have done, and thank you for being available, uh, available to us today. So thank you for that. If you have anything else you want to add, feel free to do so. And yeah, thank you for being with us today. Thanks for having me. Okay, this is it for today. I'm Giacomo. This is Sasa Hub. See you next time. Hey,